IoT, powering the digital economy. Brought to you by Schneider Electric. is the oldest industry on earth and since its beginning it has always been a risky enterprise prey to weather narrow profits and uncertain markets but farmers today are having to face some of the biggest challenges in the sector's history as global population grows so does the need for more and more food from fewer acres competition for land and water labor shortages Climate change and increasing environmental regulation add to an already challenging agenda. In the past, mechanization proved the key to farming progress. But food producers are now turning not only to digital, but a whole host of innovative technologies to reduce costs and increase efficiencies in this often volatile marketplace. The use of digital technology in agriculture, also known as agri-tech, is booming. In 2017, investors ploughed almost $700 million into agri-tech companies, more than double the previous year. But by 2050, it's estimated that the number of mouths to feed around the world will reach over 9.5 billion. So levels of investment will still need to rise for farming to meet future demand. In this programme, I'll be finding out how cutting-edge technology is transforming traditional farming methods and ushering in a new era of food production. I'll be meeting disruptors and adapters and finding out how digital innovation can increase efficiencies, help manage our livestock and bring fresher, more sustainable food to our tables. And we'll also hear from experts in agri-tech about future developments in the sector. There are over 270 million dairy cows producing milk around the world. But demand is outstripping supply, and the pressure on farmers to increase their yield is unrelenting. In the UK alone, milk production has more than doubled in the past 40 years, to a current daily average of around 24 litres per cow. This has certainly kept milk prices low and in plentiful supply for the consumer. But for the farmer with high yield at stake, maintaining a healthy herd is a constant challenge. I've come to Fife in Scotland to see how one company is using cloud-based technology to set the standard in assessing the well-being of livestock. Douglas Armstrong is CEO of Ice Robotics, a company that specializes in using sensors to detect movement in farm animals. Upper Urquhart Farm here in Fife installed the company's cow alert system in October 2017. Hi, Didi. Hello, Douglas. Welcome to Scotland. Thank you. And the lovely it's weather. Lovely to be here. <laughs> Come this way. Thank you. All right, Douglas. So, what is this system you've got here? Well, first of all, this is the sensor that we fit onto the cows. It goes on the cow's rear leg, uh, and it acts really like a sophisticated Fitbit. Uh, so, what it's doing is it's recording data multiple times a second. The data then is transmitted. It goes over a, a trigger in the milking parlor. Uh, the data is then sent to the cloud. Uh, we run our diagnostic algorithms in the cloud and then all the information is sent back to the PC. And how does that make things uh, easier for farmers? Well, there's three or four really important things in a farm. Uh, one of them is fertility. For a, for a cow to produce milk, it has to have a calf. So one of the very first things that we do is, is we tell the farmer when the cow is ready to serve. Um, so whenever the farmer goes on, he can see here that he's got 12 cows that are ready to serve today. They're in heat. And whenever he clicks on this, you see the graph. So you can see this is our regular behavior every day. So this is her walking to the milking parlor. And what we're doing is we're measuring the difference between today's behavior and yesterday's behavior. Whenever she becomes in heat, she's looking for a mate. She's not interested in lying down anymore. And her behavior totally changes. And you can see here a lot more activity in the graph. And that's triggered a heat alert. So as you can see, cows like to lie down. So they're either lying or eating or they will socialize. But generally speaking, they will lie down for about 12 hours every day. Uh, and if they're not, if they're lying down for less than that or they're lying down for a lot longer, 
then you know that there's something potentially wrong. So it either could be a Kai comfort issue, they might not be comfortable in their surroundings, or they could be ill, or they could be lame. So if they're lying down a long time, they've got sore feet, and they lie down a little bit longer. So from that information, uh, we can then start to look at lameness itself. Yeah. So lameness is a, is a critical thing because it, the cow could be in pain if she's lame, so we don't want that. The farmers don't want their animals to be suffering. So they, we've developed a lameness detection system which identifies cows that are becoming lame. Dr. Vivi Thorup is lead scientist at ICE Robotics and developed the algorithm that detects lameness using the cow alert system. Why is lameness an important issue for dairy farmers? There are many good reasons. Uh, a lame cow produces less milk than she optimally could produce if she wasn't lame. Um, so the farmers, you could say the farmers losing money. It's also a welfare issue to the cow because if the cow's lame, it's, it's, it's a sign that she, she's feeling pain. She's got sore feet for some reason. Lameness has an impact on cow reproduction because she's not as good as expressing that she's in heat when she has sore feet. So you would want to, you know, uh, relieve her of, of that pain and, and make sure that she's in peak condition and that she can express her heat when she needs to. Are there plans for future developments with the system? Do you plan to add a lot more features to it? Yes, we're constantly looking out for uh, extra things to detect via the accelerometer data that we're picking off from the cow's legs. And if there are different diseases that express themselves with different changes in behavioural patterns, we are able to measure them and, and come up with an algorithm that detects that particular disease. Farmer Alex Jack is already seeing the benefits to her 300 strong herd of milking cows. The cow alert system that we've put in here has been fantastic because it's like having a person with each individual cow all day long, collecting data from them. Every morning I check the computer and I'm able to see cows that are not lying for long enough and that would indicate that there's potentially a problem with them. Furthermore, it's also collecting all their heats so we're more accurate with uh, getting cows into calf earlier, which is obviously better for them and better for us. The Urquhart farm here in Fife is a long-established family holding with a mix of livestock and arable. It is what we might all think of as a traditional farm, but the creation of new farms will also be crucial if we're to meet with growing consumer demand. With cropland and pasture at a premium, food producers are having to rethink and also reshape the farm of the future. London, it's a hub of innovation, but perhaps the last place you'd associate with agriculture. But one ingenious London startup has crowdfunded its way to write a new chapter in sustainable farming. I'm about to travel over a hundred feet below street level to the world's first subterranean salad farm, called aptly enough Growing Underground. Built in a network of disused tunnels, originally used as air raid shelters during the Second World War. These long abandoned passageways have been transformed into a state of the art subterranean garden. Co founder and CEO Stephen Dring has a long-held passion for sustainable farming. Would you like to try a little bit of fennel? Oh yes, please. Here we go. It's got that real kind of intense aniseed flavour. Lots of sweetness to it as well. Mm. Chefs like it because they use it in desserts as mm. well as kind of salads. So Very nice. But how do you manage to grow all of this here? So a simple technology just using LEDs and hydroponics, so LED lighting that's now kind of advanced enough to replicate the spectrum that we get from the sun. Mm. And then it's just simple hydroponics where we just flood the root system with water and nutrients and then that floods these benches and then that ebbs back to the tanks below us mm. and then we recirculate the water from there. Fantastic. We've got a variety of different products, so we've got some baby leaf products and then we've got some herbs and microherbs as well. So we grow about 10, 15 different microherbs and it's just normal herbs but grown to a small level with real intense flavours in them. 
Um, and then we grow some pea shoots, we grow some sunflower shoots, um, some daikon radish shoots. So lots of different flavours, lots of different types of products. So the beauty of controlled environment agriculture or growing with this kind of precision means that every six days I will get a crop of peas. So I get 60 crops a year. If you were growing in a field, you'd get five. If you were growing in a greenhouse, you may get 25. Um, so it's those efficiencies. I can be much, I can produce a lot more volume in such a smaller space, and that allows me to compete in terms of the economics. So who are your customers? Um, so we supply to a variety of customers in the UK. So we've got the food service market, and then we've got our retail market as well. Our food service market are restaurants and contract caterers and hotel groups, and then the retailers are Marks and Spencers, Ocado, Waitrose, so all the major retailers in the UK. Let's then focus on the consumer. How does all of this benefit the consumer? Um, I, th I think it's more around consumer choice. Um, certainly consumers want a, a local product, they want a sustainable product, but they also want provenance as well. They want to know where their food is coming from. And because of the short supply chain, we deliver it into, a, into stores and, and, and our customers get the product earlier than they usually would, it means it lasts longer in their fridge. So hopefully it means that they'll eat that product and then we don't have food waste as well. So there's a lot of benefits along the way why customers choose our product, but I think the starting point is some really good flavours and really punchy flavours in there, which they enjoy. I want to know more about the technology that comes with all of this. How does it all work? Throughout the whole of the farm we have sensors placed in, in, in lots of strategic places throughout the farm. That captures data in terms of air velocity, temperature, uh, it also captures pH levels in the water, EC levels. Um, so we're capturing all of these different elements around the environment. And then in real time, we're adjusting that to give the plants exactly what they want all of the time. So it's just giving the plants an optimum environment to grow at every second of every day. And managing all of that data must be challenging. Um, yes, all of those sensors go back to a lot cleverer people than me at Cambridge University. Uh, they crunch all the numbers and all the data and then we're, we're constantly adjusting the system with those guys to make sure that we've got the optimum environment for growing. Um, so it's just using that bit of traditional kind of agriculture and then linking it in with the sensors and then Cambridge to be able to analyse the data with us. Precision urban farming is one answer to the challenges food producers face today. And as consumer demand grows, we can be sure there will be many more challenges to come. But how are farms and farmers adapting to the changes in the sector? And what does all this mean for the consumer? Join me after the break when I'll be finding out. Digital farming is changing the face of the agriculture sector and transforming productivity with radical new tools and working methods. But what do these new methods of food production bring to modern consumers and how do they benefit? Harper Adams University in Shropshire in the UK is a world leader in agricultural technology and digital research. Professor James Lowenberg de Boer holds the position as the Elizabeth Creek Chair of Agritech Economics. He believes farming innovation is building new relationships with the consumer. There's a, a growing part of the consumer world that is interested in how their food is produced, uh, what kind of methodologies are used, and what the impact of that food production is. Uh, and this corresponds to a time when there's much more information available and it's much easier for farmers to communicate. So there's much more communication occurring at the same time that most people, in fact the majority, especially in the industrialized world, have lost direct connections to farming. Uh, so a couple, two, three, four generations ago, most people had some part of their family that was involved in agriculture, and that's no longer the case. Uh, but this increasing communication about, uh, you know, how was this animal raised that uh, I'm now eating, or how was this grain or, or other product produced? And the companies, the food and, and uh, beverage companies, will influence that maybe to an even more direct extent because they are filtering what they perceive the consumers to want. Eric Lemaire is the Food and Beverage Solution Marketing Director at Schneider Electric, a European multinational specializing in energy management and automation. 
Eric believes the transparency in the supply chain is the key to meeting rising consumer expectations. Transparency is uh, one of the key uh, challenges of uh, the, the food industry and the agriculture uh, together. Uh, we all want to know where the food has been uh, produced, how it has been produced and how it has been transformed and transported. So uh, there is a lot of work uh, being done at the present time in this direction. We see many initiatives to have a complete tracking of uh, the product from the farm to the distribution point. Uh, several examples exist uh, already uh, with uh, companies like uh, Cargill, they implemented uh, traceability of uh, Turkey from their point of production to the point of distribution. In France, Carrefour is uh, starting the same uh, exercise with uh, chicken production uh, as well. Uh, you know that it's quite easy to, uh, to do because uh, the transformation from uh, the chicken from the moment it is grown to the moment is, uh, it is consumed, is not, uh, uh, there is not a lot of, uh, of change. Uh, it will be more difficult to have the same thing for pizza, where uh, the number of uh, ingredients you need to, uh, to make the, the pizza is uh, much bigger. But we are working on this type of uh, element. Uh, this uh, information can be uh, uh, guaranteed uh, using technologies like uh, blockchain that will uh, allow that it cannot be modified and when it has been uh, published and it can be also certified by uh, quality certification uh, bodies in order to make sure that the final consumer can see exactly where the product were uh, manufactured and what were the, uh, the ingredients used for this product and where uh, these ingredients were coming from. For Douglas Armstrong of Ice Robotics, transparency is even more crucial when it comes to the rearing of livestock. But consumers are, are really very, very interested in where their, their food comes from. They want safe food, but they also want to be assured that the animals that are producing it are kept in the best standards that they can be. Um, and animal welfare is, is a critical issue. So we're monitoring the animals 24-7. That data is, is provided to the farmer, but the farmer can also share that with his processor or, or the consumer if he wanted to. So the consumer gets complete transparency as to what's going on in the farm. And that's really, really important as we, as we go forward uh, because people want to be sure that the animals are well kept. But so do farmers. Farmers historically have always and traditionally looked after their farm animals. So it's not a contradiction, but this just provides a method by which they can validate that to a consumer. I think the benefit for the consumer is knowing that the welfare of these cows is of utmost. We're doing everything we possibly can to make sure that they are safe and have enough to eat, that they're comfortable, that they're not lame. All these things for the consumer is really important. Plus, we're producing more milk because their welfare is higher, which then means that the milk will be cheaper for the consumer because it's obviously expensive now for food and we're trying to continue to drive that. New digital innovations are helping farmers flourish in the face of increasing global demand. But in a sector full of so many developments and opportunities, what does the future hold? After the break, I'll be talking to experts about the cutting edge of agritech and finding out what to expect from the farming of tomorrow. New innovations are equipping farmers with the digital tools to help meet the demands of a booming global population. But just how fertile is the future of farming and what challenges to the sector lie ahead? The biggest challenge is facing the rollout uh, of agritech uh, include the difficulty in finding employees with the right skills uh, that are interested in, in uh, working in, in agriculture. Uh, young people want to go to the city, they want uh, a, a different lifestyle, they see the urban life as giving them more opportunity. So even in places like Bangladesh, which has to be one of the most crowded places in the world, it's hard to find agricultural labor. A longer term um, challenge is how the sector will adapt to the kinds of technologies that are now uh, coming on board. So key example is uh, GPS guidance changes uh, the 
economies of scale in agriculture. So with GPS guidance and even more with autonomous equipment, the size and shape of the field becomes less and less relevant. Uh, that will change where farming is done and how it's done. In the U.S., for instance, this will mean probably agriculture will move, it, move east uh, into places like Pennsylvania and New York, where they have many small fields with good soils, with good rainfall, close to markets, but which have not been farmable with conven conventional mechanized equipment. In Europe, including the UK, this means that the economic disadvantage of European agriculture with many small fields and, and, and so on will be much less than it has been for the last 30 or 40 years. So they will be more uh, competitive than they have been in the past. But adapting to those changes uh, is not, not easy. And are there any challenges that uh, you can foresee for the industry in the future? And how will technology help to um, make things easier? Well, th there's several big challenges. Uh, the consumer wants uh, a pro produce that is as low cost as possible. Um, the climate is changing dramatically around the world. So farmers are facing uh, uh, low product prices and they're facing a, an ever increasing uh, difficulty in the environment. So technologies like this help greatly in combat combating both of those things. They're trying to help the farmer become more efficient. It's the new efficiencies offered by Agritech that Stephen dreamed of growing underground finds so promising. I think the farm of tomorrow, I think what we're going to see is a highly automated, um, highly optimised. Resources like water are going to be scarce in the future and therefore we need to be extremely careful how we throw that around in terms of open field farming and how we grow. Um, so uh, painting a picture of the future, I think we're going to see more in cities, subterranean, in warehouses. For example, we are actually growing underneath one of our retailers and so their store is above us. Um, so we can literally take the product upstairs and put it straight into retail. In the future, what I think we'll see as well is a lot more farms on the roofs of supermarkets as well as underneath them. What's freeing up the rural economy to continue growing or grazing cattle? And, 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 so, and I think they'll be complementary to each other. I think farms in the city will work closer with farms in the rural environment. There's no point us trying to grow carrots in the city and potatoes, for example, whereas they lend themselves to, to large outdoor agriculture. So I think there'll be a, a, the farm of the future will look a lot different, but I think it'll look very exciting. As somebody really young in this industry, I definitely see a future, but I don't know whether or not it's going to be a really big farm. Certainly here we have a lot of cows and I hope for more. Um, and I think it's just constantly striving for better welfare, for more technology that can help us with that, and for hopefully to encourage people to come into it as well, I think is so important, and to educate the public of what, what we're doing here. Eric Lemaire believes that digital will open new channels in business-to-consumer communication. The future farming will, of course, uh, be more uh, respectful of the environment, uh, increase the productivity, but uh, use less chemicals. That uh, really one of uh, one of the goal of the uh, of the agriculture at the present time. So for this, uh, we will have to use this technology we have been talking about: uh, IoT, uh, artificial intelligence and analytics, uh, but also uh, robotics, uh, precision uh, farming. Uh, that that uh, that is. Is, uh, absolutely important and in 10 or uh, 15 years uh, it will be possible to have all the information about the product you are consuming now and the organic uh, practices of the farmer that contributed to the uh, ingredients. Agritech is the point where our oldest business farming meets our newest in digital technology. Dwindling global resources and increasing consumer demand is putting the farming sector under the greatest pressure it's ever faced. For the sector to grow to meet the needs of the 21st century, then continued investment in agritech is essential, bringing with it new production methods, efficient data analysis and cloud-based support. By embracing the digital revolution, agriculture is sure to enjoy the fruitful future it deserves.
IoT, powering the digital economy. Brought to you by Schneider Electric.